Hey guys, welcome to the vlog. So I'm going to answer some questions that have been put to me. I was supposed to answer these questions a few days ago, but uh, I got caught up in work. All right, let's start with the top question. Some people say that Python is popular because it's easy to learn and nothing more. Is this true? No, it's not true. Python is popular because it's easy to learn, because it has a huge set of libraries, they call modules, and it's used in many different fields. You can use it for web design and development, well, web development rather, you can use it for data sciences, you can use it in machine learning and AI, that's where you see a lot of big growth there. Use it in server automation. It's popular because it's easy to learn, but also because it has a lot of use cases, a lot of different areas you can learn, you can use Python. Uh, here's a guy who says, um, Hi, sir, I don't know how to thank you. What I learned from you changed my life. Now I'm a millionaire. I got a multi-million dollar contract and I'm stuck in how to implement. If you help me how to start big project, what to do, I am lost. Um, he's afraid of failing. Well, that's a lot of pressure, multi-million dollar contract. I assume it's your first. That's why you're feeling a lot of pressure. What you got to do is you got to break down the project into logical components. So I don't know what type of project it is, but that's the first thing you do. You want to take a big complex project, break it down to smaller pieces. And then once you've broken down your project into smaller pieces, since you got a multi-million dollar contract, you have the budgets to be able to hire in specialists, so special specialists rather. So you got to bring in some people. First type of person you want to bring in is a CTO type, a chief uh, technology officer. Somebody knows and has experience managing bigger projects like that so that can, you can start breaking things up into their components and then you can start bringing in the staff that you need to be able to take care of things. Um, again, with the very little information you provided me, practically none, this is as much as I can give you. So yeah, tip number one, break it up into small components. Tip number two is bring in some talent. Try to find somebody who has real-world experience that can help you with this big project. I hope that helps, and congratulations. Next question, how important do you think it is for web developers to study design patterns or software architectural patterns? Not at the beginning, not at the beginning, uh, and then slowly, maybe when you're on your second or third project, you start looking at design patterns. You start with best coding practices, as I teach in my courses, but design patterns can come later. Design patterns become more important as you become, as the projects rather become bigger and more elaborate. They're less important in the initial stages, that's for sure. The first design pattern you're going to learn, though, when it comes to the web development is MVC, Model View Controller. That's the first thing I would look at. But again, not as important with smaller projects, but good coding practices are. I hope that makes sense. Next question. Do investing my time into ML be worth it? I'm hugely interested in practical applications. What do you think? Yes, this is just the beginning of machine learning. Definitely invest your time if you're into that kind of programming. I don't see a downside. Next question. I've been wanting to launch my own web app for a while now. I'm decent at JavaScript and I'm at the point where I can start building simple apps. That's good. That's where everybody starts. Should I wait until I'm more advanced developer to launch or should, or should I build the web app with the skills I already have and iterate upon it as I progress as a developer? I'm struggling to learn JavaScript frameworks and I assume it's no, not a good idea to launch a web app without, with jQuery. No, launch a web app. Launch your web app. You're going to learn as you build your web app. You're going to learn the libraries. You're going to learn the frameworks. You're going to make mistakes as you build your web app. As I teach people, after you've gotten your fundamentals, you got to get in there. You got to get into the coder's ring and you got to start building. And you got to start building real things. You can't get stuck in this academic cycle of just doing tutorials. You have to get out there, build real things, face real problems, and learn on a need to nerd basis like every other developer out there. So yeah, just jump into it. At the end of the day, what makes a product work these days is the idea behind the software and it's the usability of the software. The back end, you can have really lousy built back ends, 
server computers and systems are so powerful these days, even if you have less than optimal code, it will still probably run really well for the first little while. And if you start hitting issues where your, your terrible architecture gets in the way, that means you're being successful. So you just do a rewrite. Every piece of major software at some point, the company does a big rewrite. Microsoft did it with Windows, Apple did it with Mac OS. Mac OS 10 is a total rewrite from scratch versus OS 9. So just jump into it, that's my advice. Next question. What should I study if I want to, for example, know how many servers an app or website would need, etc. Oof. So obviously not his first language. If I understand his question, it says, how can he figure out whether or not his particular website is going to require multiple servers? Short answer is it will probably never require multiple servers unless you get really, really lucky. And even then, what you do is you just deploy to the cloud. Any cloud-based hosting company will be able to scale for you nicely. So I wouldn't worry about scaling now. Get your app out there. If you want to look at scaling, though, in, as a general topic, I would look at cloud-based uh, hosting and virtualizations, and that is the way to go. Can you talk about frameworks for noobs and what they're used for? Okay, a framework, and there's many different frameworks. It could be a JavaScript framework, it could be a Java framework, it could be a PHP framework, it could be a Python framework, it could be frameworks for the front end, that means the web browser, it could be frameworks that work on the server with, let's say, your server code, let's say in Java or in Python or in PHP or JavaScript. Anyway, a framework is just a library of code that's organized and it does a particular task. So you might have a framework that makes it easy for you to launch content management systems. You might have a framework that's just a general purpose web app framework like Java Spring or Python Django or PHP Laravel, uh, Express JS. Frameworks are just libraries of code. And they provide a starting structure, almost like a template for you to use to build your apps. And yes, you should use them. Save yourself a lot of time. How can you best use race to the bottom freelance sites like Elancer Upwork to get experience and, started and get started as a freelancer? Well, the first few gigs that you do, first few jobs, first few jobs you do as a freelancer should be, consider them your stages. People will go to boot camps, spend ten, twenty thousand $20,000 on a boot camp and, and one of the reasons I've heard people say, well, I get to do a stash. You don't need to spend ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. You get a nice course like mine that will teach you, uh, in my opinion, very, very well. And then what you do is you go to, a, uh, you, you go to one of these sites like Elance, et cetera, Upwork, and just bid super cheap on a project. Consider it your training. You're going to be learning how to work with clients. You're going to learn how to build things. You're going to learn um, how to manage projects, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to learn how to use a freelance site at the same time. And guess what? You don't have to pay a boot camp ten, twenty thousand dollars to do this. You got it right there for you. So think of these tools, uh, these sites, as a way to get your first, uh, to get your your feet wet in terms of the freelance game. But here's the thing: why don't you build up a reputation uh, in a freelance community? You'll be able to uh, pull away from those race to the bottom types type of gigs. I know I have friends of mine who use them and they went there to try to save money, but in the end, when they're dependent on a software developer, they find they're spending a lot of money in the end. So there are strategies in terms which you can utilize rather to maximize your earning potential on one of these freelance sites. So uh, I wouldn't be too concerned if you, for example, you live in Europe or North America where you where on these freelance sites you're going to have to compete with other parts of the world where they don't need to make nearly as much money to live well, you can still use these freelance sites as a way to, again, develop some skills, get your first couple clients on deck so that you can, so you, you slowly develop a reputation. Then you can go after local jobs once you have a couple projects under your belt. That's the hardest part about being a freelancer, just getting your first couple projects. Once you get the first few, the rest are pretty easy. Is 20 late to start programming AI or AI? Pfft, what are you kidding? <laughs> it's, it's early. No, no, just keep, it's 20, go. Okay, next question. Awesome. That's a great question. Okay, next question. Hi, I want to know if you speak French fluently. 
Well, I will speak French. Oui, je parle français, je, je viens de Québec, mais mon français n'est pas parfait parce que c'est rare que je parle français aujourd'hui, mais presque tout le monde en Québec parle le français. Anyway, I just spoke French there.